Welcome to Smallthorn Community Church. It's great to have you with us this morning. Thank you for joining our digital service. Yeah, it's great to be with you again. And haven't we had some fantastic weather this week? We have, yeah, yeah. It was really warm on Friday, wasn't it? Oh. A bit like being abroad temperature. Yeah, it reminded of us as of when we used to go to Menorca on holiday. Yeah. It's been a shame that lots of us have had to cancel our, our holiday plans this year. Some people are getting away, but, but a lot of us have, have had to cancel. It's disappointing. In yeah. fact, we were looking forward to going to Italy at the start of September, but it's just not going to happen this year. No, it's not. Well, you see, I was sort of hoping I got my swim shorts ready oh, out. Oh, there they are. Ready, ready for yes. my holidays. But Very I think snazzy. I'm, I'm yes. going to probably have to um, pack them away again. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> yeah they need to go away. Not going to get an air in this year. No, it's not going to happen, is it? So, because it was so disappointing, we just thought it would be great for a few of us to submit some, some holiday snaps. So, some of you have shared some of your, your really nice holiday photographs, uh, reminding us of our favourite holiday. So, mm. we're going to have a look at those holiday snaps now. Daddy smells. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed those photographs. I did. Um, some one or two funny moments there. I think in the photographs as well that were good. Yeah, I really enjoyed seeing those. They were, they were really nice. So this morning, Pastor Paul Howells uh, is our speaker, and we'll be hearing from Paul a little later in our service. Yeah. And the, th the theme of this morning's service and Paul's preach is God is closer than we think. Mm. So, you know, sometimes we think that God's far away and experiences of life often make us think that, don't they? We go through mm. an experience and, and it's not God that is further away, it's us that gets further away from him. And, it's, and we often think God is distant and remote. But this morning... We're going to focus on the fact that actually God is closer than what you think. Yeah, and what, one of the ways in which we can get closer to God is through worship. The Bible says as we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. And we're just going to have take the opportunity to have a short time of worship now. Um, and so let us take this opportunity, each in individual, uh, as an individual, to actually worship God, to concentrate on God. So Kirsty. Dan and Richard are going to lead us in a beautiful song called Here Again. Can go back to the beginning Can control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? All I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Will you meet me here again? Will you meet me? the vast. 
was really good um, I really like the lyrics to that song um, some of the, the lyrics say this I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again because all I want is all you are will you meet me here again not for a minute was I forsaken the Lord is in this place the Lord is in this place those are such powerful, powerful lyrics, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And such a powerful sentiment. If only we could kind of realise that and really grasp hold of that. This place, yeah. It's the, yeah, yeah. you know, and God is with us. Yeah. And God does want to draw close to us this morning. Yeah. He wants to meet us right where we are. The Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord is with us at this time. Yeah, so, so Angela, I just think it'd be a good if you could just sort of do a short prayer for us yep. right now and just to ask God to meet us right where we are this morning. Yeah, so I'm going to pray and just think thinking about, about what we've just heard in the song and that great truth that, that God wants to draw close to yeah. us and be with us. Father, thank you that you are such a wonderful saviour. You're such a wonderful father. And Lord, thank you for the truth of your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, we change, Lord. Our, we, 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 we drift away from you at times, Lord, but you are constant, mm -hmm. you are always with us, and you are always there, yeah. wanting to draw close to us and be, be a, a wonderful saviour, a wonderful yeah. father. And Lord, we just pray for all those that are listening to our service this morning, mm -hmm. whatever they need from you, Lord, that they will you will draw close to them and you, they will cl draw close to you, Lord. Yeah. And you will, Lord, be a blessing unto our, everyone that's, that's connected to our church this morning in our service. Yeah. Lord, help us to be reminded, Lord, as we, as we get caught up in the busy, busyness of life, that you are always there, Lord. You are closer than hands and feet, Lord. And this is a wonderful truth. And we just pray, Lord, that you'll bless us as we think about this even more, as we listen to Paul's message 
that the truth of it will really resound to us all. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 So we're just going to read a psalm following mm. on from that before we, we hand over to Paul and we listen we, we get into the to the word of God this morning. So we're going to we're going to work uh, read Psalm 91. It's a wonderful yeah, psalm mm. and it speaks from freedom from trouble coming near. So let's we're just going to read it together. Yeah. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evil will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you don't even hurt your foot on a stone. You trample upon lions and co cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Amen. That was great. Really enjoyed reading that. So now we're going to hand over to Pastor Paul, who's going to speak to us about um, God being closer than what we think. Hi, good morning and welcome. And uh, I guess this time of the year you could be listening to this broadcast from uh, an hotel room or a caravan or the beach or with family and friends uh, or just at home but wherever you are tuning in from this morning welcome it's uh, it's it's good to connect it's good to be together and i've got a an amazing biblical statement uh, to share with you this morning it's a fantastic statement and if you're new Christian, if you're relatively new to Christianity, um, you may have come across it but you may not have. If you've uh, been a Christian for any length of time, you've certainly come across it. Uh, but I always think it brings fresh encouragement to us when we hear it. And the statement is found in the book of Acts in chapter 17 and verse 27. And it's, uh, it's an extract from the Apostle Paul's sermon. The Apostle Paul went to the city of Athens and uh, found himself debating with the scholars of the day and launches into one of the most compelling sermons that he delivered. And I just want to take a little extract from that sermon from the 27th verse towards the end of the verse. And it says this, God is not far from any one of you. Well, wow. That's amazing, isn't it, eh? God is not far from any one of you. Have you ever felt on times that God maybe has lost your contact details? You're not hearing from God anymore. He seems very distant. He seems remote. You don't feel that you're in his focus anymore. You're not on his screensaver. You may have slipped off the radar Suddenly God is not, is not coming through for you and your situation it seems is desperate but where is God? He's, you're not on his to-do list. Of course it's all to do with perception. You're not on his to-do list anymore and so you wonder whether you've gone missing when it comes to God connecting with you. 
Well, if you've been there, and it's a real place to arrive, to arrive at, if you've been there in the past, then let me tell you that you're in the company of some giants from the Bible. Um, because Moses, David, Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and even Jesus himself felt like that. You remember on the uh, Good Friday, the first Good Friday, when Jesus died on the cross, one of the statements from the cross that afternoon was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now in the Christian life, and we, we have perceptions about God, and uh, our perception sometimes can be that God is a very close friend. He's near and dear to us, and we feel his presence, and we hear his voice, we hear his whispers, so that means that he's very close to us. But also there are times when God just feels a vague figure. So he's out there somewhere. He's, 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 he's out in eternity somewhere, but he's not really close to us. And we go through those times and we, I guess most of us have been on either end of that spectrum where we felt God is really close to us. And we felt other times that God is just a distant, vague figure and uh, who we have feel that we have lost connection with. Now, in that little verse that I've um, quoted from Acts chapter 17, the context is that Paul, the Apostle Paul, on a missionary journey, finds himself in the city of Athens, in the, the country of Greece. And he arrives in Athens and he, he goes on a walkabout. He, do, he does what any tourist would do. He goes to do some sightseeing. And he's on a walkabout. And what does he see? He sees idols and carvings and statues, statues everywhere. And uh, it was very much a pagan culture. And um, it, it's estimated that there were over 30,000 statues or altars or idols in the city of Athens. And so Paul takes it all this in and... and uh, Luke tells us when he writes the narrative of the book of Acts, he tells us that what Paul saw disturbed him. It disturbed him. It moved his spirit within him. It provoked his spirit because what he saw was really people wanting to, to engage with somebody greater than themselves. He saw people having a desire to link with somebody bigger, greater than themselves, some form of deity. But they had, they had brought it down to their own level and they had created their own God. They had created their own statue and uh, so that they could relate to that statue. That statue could be near to them, could be close. They could have it on their desk or they could have it in their window or they could have it in their bedroom or wherever. And that statue would be close to them. And uh, so, but... Paul saw beyond what the end result was and he saw the motive. There was a desire to know more, to move into a greater spirituality than they, they were actually seeing at that time. It's ironic, isn't it, that Athens is known as a city of learning, a city of knowledge. And, uh, you know, they had all the knowledge going, but they sadly lacked in one area, their knowledge of God, of the living God. And uh, even though they were highly intelligent and, and deeply religious and very intellectual, they just didn't know about the living God. And so they made these idols, they made these statues of gold and silver and, and, and placed them all around the city and so that they could be close to them, they could identify with them. And, you know, when Paul sees this, I'm sure there was a twinkle in his eye. And uh, if we, if somebody could have captured the moment and put a bubble above Paul's head, and in that bubble there would have been, there was one word in very large uppercase letters, and that word would have been opportunity. He sees it. He sees all the statues. He sees all the carvings. And he sees opportunity. And Paul engages with people who were, intellectual of course he himself was an intellectual giant but he engages with people who were brilliant minds and and highly educated people and um, he delivers what I've said at the beginning is one of the most compelling sermons uh, that we read of in the New Testament and basically he says 
I want to introduce you to a God that you can know. Not a God who's remote, not a God who's detached, not a God who has forgotten about his creation, but a God who is close to you. He's closer than you think. He's near to you. And uh, he says he's not far from any one of us. And of course, uh, Paul was living proof of that verse when you think of it, because uh, there had been a day in Paul's life where Paul, a very religious man, lots of zeal, but didn't know God as he should have. And one day there was an intervention in his life. It's recorded in Acts chapter 9. There's an intervention in Paul's life where the, the Jesus comes to Paul and he comes close to Paul. And of course Paul has this dramatic life-changing encounter on the road to Damascus. And uh, God supernaturally, Jesus supernaturally broke into his world and changed his life. Paul says, this God is not far from any one of us. This God that is described as, as eternal, as immortal, as invisible, as almighty, as, as omnipotent. But he's not out of reach. He's not distant to us. He's accessible to us. He's close to us. And of course, that's the key message of Christmas. That's the central message of Christmas, that that the incarnation, that God stepped out of eternity into time, that God came among us. That's what John says. He captures it in three, in four words. He said, word, the word became flesh. God came to earth. God came to be with us. One of the names ascribed to Jesus, of course, is Emmanuel, which actually means God with us. And so Christmas is about us seeing in, in, in reality that God wanted to be close to us. God wanted to identify with us. God came to live among us. And so God can be known, Paul says. God is God. God we, we can have a connection with God. And uh, of course, in that day, they to them, God was unknown. And, and sadly, today, we're in a society where, by and large, God is unknown. God is not known to people. and and But he's a God who wants to engage with us. He's a God who wants to draw close to us, who wants to relate to us. God comes close. God doesn't do social distancing. God invites himself to, 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 to invites us to draw near to him. And the Bible says, when we draw near to him, then he draws near to us. You see, God, God has a passion to be with people. And if you follow the history, the timeline of history, and uh, you will see that it's always been God's heart to connect with people, to come down with people and have fellowship with people. It started, of course, in the Garden of Eden. It started with Adam and Eve. They were created in paradise. And the Bible says that God came down in the cool of the day and communed with them and had conversation with them. Sadly, all that went wrong. And, but then through the wilderness, there was the, there was the tabernacle and then there was the temple, of course, which were just focal points for people to come together because they felt that the presence of God was there. And then, of course, the ultimate is that God sent his son. God sent Jesus to be among us uh, so that we could be near to him. So Jesus became the bridge, if you like, between God uh, and, and man. Uh, God is close. He's not out of reach, Paul says. We could spend a lot, long time going through certain verses of the Bible which would just confirm that. One of my favourites is in a, an Old Testament little book, an obscure book, is Zephaniah. And it says this in chapter 3, that when God looks over us, he rejoices. He sings over us. He sings, he rejoices over us. He takes great pleasure in us. So the seasons of your life and my life will change. They will fluctuate, but God will never change. He is always near at hand he is not distant he is not remote 
Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8 that he poses a rhetorical question. To what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Jesus is close to us. God is close to us. The Bible says the Lord of hosts is with us. We are, Hebrews 13 tells us that the words of, of, of God are that he will never leave us uh, nor forsake us. So God is near to us. And sometimes, you know, we have to, we only discover it in the, in the dynamic of faith. Sometimes we just relate to God by our feelings and we'll never really have an accurate idea of God just operating out of our feelings. We have to operate in faith. Faith is a wonderful thing. It's like, it's like Wi-Fi because it connects us to where we need to be. It, 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 it has power to connect us where we need to be. And when we operate in faith, then we get connected with a God who is not far away. A God who is, who is near to us. And sometimes we allow perception to rule rather than the promise. The promise is always greater than your perception. But we allow the perception sometimes to dominate our thinking. God is far away. God has forgotten my contact details. God no longer wants to engage with me. They're all perceptions, but they're warped. I encourage you today to take hold of the promise again. The promise elevates itself over your perception that God is for you. God is not against you. His heart is towards you. His thoughts are towards you. The Bible says our names are written on the palms of his hands. God is for you today. Believe the promise. Move away from your perception and believe the promise. Our feelings can just be so inaccurate. They're so unpredictable, of course, our feelings as well. And they're influenced by surroundings they're influenced by how people relate to us or what what is said to us and, and sometimes our feelings can just can just take over and, and and we have a very skewed view of God see there's a little caption that says uh, if you feel God is far away guess who moved and it's not God hmm? But our feelings sometimes can just pull us away. Our feelings can take us into, into a place where we just feel sorry for ourselves, and, 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 and we're encumbered about with so many self-introvert feelings that we fail to see that God is for us. After all, God invites us to cast all our cares on him. If God is a million miles away, you can't begin to cast your cares on him. He must be near so that you can just lift your, you lift the cares, the worries, the anxieties that you have uh, onto him. God is not a million miles away today. Actually, God's only a prayer away. The Bible is full of in incidents where people prayed and God responds. And God is, not, God is not a million miles away. He's just a prayer away. The Lord is near to us. He's close at hand. You know, David in the Psalms, a man after God's own heart. Very often he'd feel abandoned by God. He, he confesses that in the writings in the Psalms. He, he, felt, for, he felt forsaken. He, he felt abandoned. The interesting thing that I see with David, that instead of him running away as far as he can and turning his back on God, when he felt God had abandoned him, his perception, he actually turns to God. He actually runs after God. He actually put, sets his heart to focus uh, on, on God. Uh, God is near. God is close. You know, God thinks uh, far more about you than you think uh, about him. The Bible says his thoughts are continually towards us. Thoughts to bless us. Thought, thoughts to give us a hope uh, and our future. Psalm 139, what an amazing psalm that is. It's an amazing scripture to read. God knows us better than we know ourselves. Every thought, every motive, every desire. He knows our pain. He knows what we wrestle with. He knows our struggles. 
He knows those things uh, that we need, to, we need to overcome on a daily basis. Uh, and he understands it all. Because he's close. Because he knows us. He's sustaining creation. He's upholding everything. And yet he's interested in the minute details of your life. God is close. And sometimes our perception is that God is far removed from us. And you know, if God is far removed, you'll have difficulty praying. You'll have difficulty praying if you don't feel that God is close at hand. And the devil would like to portray the fact that God is busy elsewhere. God has forgotten about you. You're no, you're no longer important to him. He's got bigger fish to fry than you. That's what the enemy would like us to, to believe. But it's a lie. Because God is for you. God is interested in you. And your, your pray, when you pray, he responds to you. Actually, he invites us to draw near. And then he draw nears to us. That's the, that's the exhortation of the Bible. Let's draw near to God. That's marvellous, you know, for us as a new creation. Because in the Old Testament, it was only the priests that could go near. The people had to stay without. It was only the priests who were appointed to go in and, and in, into the holy place. And they represented the people before God. But all that changed under the community of grace, under the covenant of grace. And God invites us in now. It doesn't matter who you are. God invites you in. God is close to us. God is for us. The book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the last but one chapter, is a, is a brilliant statement where it says, The tabernacle of God, the dwelling of God, is with men. And God's heart is to be with us. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what was achieved at Easter. That God wants to be with his people. And I pray today you will feel the nearness of the presence of God. Uh, I invite you that if you feel forsaken this morning, you feel, you feel abandoned by God. You're looking for answers and you, you, you're not getting any, any, any connection with God uh, I invite you today to pray afresh. Just come, just get on your knees today and pray afresh and say, God, visit my life. God, you're not a million miles away. I know it. I believe it. I'm laying aside my perception and I'm embracing the promise. And the promise is that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I pray today this God of heaven and earth, this eternal, immortal, invisible God, knows your name, knows the hairs on your head, knows everything about you, knows your inner struggles, knows, knows what's before you, knows your tomorrows. He wants to come close to you. Will you respond to him today? Will you open your heart to him today? If you're not a Christian and you're watching this today, God is for you. God's got a plan for your life God's got a much better future to give you than you've created the past. Much better. Respond to him today. Open your heart to him today. Christian friend today, just wherever you are, feel it, the nearness of God. God is for us. Nothing can separate us. Lay aside perceptions and embrace the promise. This God is not far from any one of you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That was great. Really, really challenging. Yeah, really great. Thank you. Really, really challenging ministry. Yeah. So if God has spoken to you this morning, yeah. we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And please get in touch via our church email address, which will come up on the screen now. But it's enquiries at smallthorn.org. We hope you have a great week and remember, God is with you even when you don't realise he's there. Yeah, and we're going to just end our service now by listening to a lovely song from Stain's Worship Group. Thank you to Neil and Jane from our church for organising this and it features their daughter Sarah um, who is on lead vocals. So we hope you enjoy the song. May God bless you and thank you for joining us again this morning.